Hello. Hi. I'm Anna um, and Reedsy have asked me to come along tonight to critique some of your covers that you've all um, really kindly been submitting over the last few days. So um, I hope it's helpful. And if I can cover your cover, that's great. If not, hopefully I've picked enough genres that I can cover um, a genre that you're working in and you can get some good tips. So yeah, I'm a cover designer. I have um, been designing for 10 years, I think now, and book designing for five. I recently left a really big publisher in London to go freelance. So I've joined up with Reedsy and it's really nice to work on some more projects. I am and a cover designer and an illustrator. So I do all sorts of covers. That's the nice thing about being a cover designer. You don't necessarily have a specialism. So I do fiction, non-fiction, literary fiction is my favourite, um, a bit of YA, cookbooks, all sorts. Um, and yeah, a couple of points that I thought I would make before we started was that as a cover designer, it's so rare that you can actually read the book at all. Usually working on so many things, there's just not time. So you re rely really heavily on a really good brief from usually the editor, but it might be you in, in this case. Um, so you want to have a really clear brief and give a really good synopsis just to kind of encapsulate everything. So the designer has a good idea of what you're, you're trying to convey. Um, and you really want to know your market. Um, so if you're doing crime book, look at the crime covers most genres have a, a bit of a formulaic style um so to fit into that it's really important to do some good market research um and it often requires quite a lot of revisions you don't always get it right first time and you can go back and change things um so so just kind of keep working on it um and Another thing before I start, because I think it's time to start now, something I noticed with most of the covers I, I looked at for this, which is something that's been really drummed into me as a cover designer, is thinking about the thumbnail. So you've always got to think about your cover when it's seen this big, because for the most part, you're going to be selling it on Amazon or online. So the first place people are going to see it is going to be tiny. So if you can't read the title, if the image isn't clear, if you just can't tell what genre it's in, it's going to fail on that kind of first hurdle. So that's something I'm going to be picking up on quite a few of these covers is thinking about it when it's it's really small, when it's this big. So number one is Star Mount. It's a memoir. Um, so for a memoir, I'd say great to have the kind of nostalgic photo on there. Um, that's perfect. But I'd say you might want to make it feel like an actual photo, like an object, um, just just to kind of give it some context. I'd say make it look like a photo, like an old photo on a surface. Um, give it some aging. I mean, I know it's it's not like you're not talking about the 40s or something, but you still want to give it a bit of context that it that you're talking about something in the past it's an old photo a bit of aging on a surface so it's an object that'd be really nice um and i don't know which one of these boys is is you mark but it would be nice to find a way to highlight whichever one's you whichever one the story's about um so maybe you're knocking back the colors which might help it make make it look a bit older anyway um but keep them a little bit brighter on you, keep the contrast a bit higher on you. You don't have to be in colour and the rest in black and white, but it would be worth kind of it being obvious which one was you on the cover. And then I'd say for the typeface, I don't think this type's working much for you. It's not really conveying anything. Um, and for a memoir, it's a really personal story. That's why people are going to be reading it. Um, I'd say a hand, hand-drawn typeface is great for that. That immediately gives you that personal element and it's going to feel like it's, it's written 
by you and it's and it's like a really personal story so that's that would really help i think give some emotion to your cover because i don't think this type's really giving you any emotion um similarly i think your subtitle could say a bit more um just a bit more about um what the book's about about you about what happens that doesn't tell you too much there um and do, 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 any others yeah i think that's good look, have a look at memoirs um they tend to be kind of old looking photos and quite often handwritten type it, it they can be fair, fairly formulaic so you, you could fit this in quite nicely to the genre i think number two is spider sight so this is a ya a young adult horror um and I would say first off, this is this is hard as a thumbnail. So if I take it back here, which is like oh, which way? the size you're going to be seeing on Amazon, you can't read your title at all and you can't read your author name. So that's something you've got to look at straight off. Um, your title up here, this typeface, it's, it's quite hard to read. Um, for something horror, I think you want maybe a sans serif or something with some texture on it, something a bit chunkier that feels a bit more kind of uncomfortable. This um, typewriter typeface isn't really conveying anything kind of creepy or scary, I don't think. Um, so I'd definitely change your typeface. Something bigger, a lighter colour. I think with these black borders, it's just disappearing off and you, you can't read it at all. So it needs to be the first thing you, you see. Equally with your author name, super hard to read. Um, have it bigger. Again, a heavier typeface is going to help. Um, and something which I came across on quite a lot of them, lots of people have put by author name. You don't need that. You don't need to say by. Um, if there's a kind of a, a first name and a surname on it, you know it's a it's the author. So just take off by. Um, and it's a, it's a good creepy concept. It's it's about a girl who can see spiders. Um, I feel like this is feeling a little bit sci-fi at the moment, and your imagery is fairly kind of um, straightforward. I think you could you could make it a bit more subtle. So if you're going to use this girl, the spider in the eyes is like a bit of a secondary. So you, you've picked up the book because she looks intriguing, and then you're like, oh, there's a spider in her eye. That's that's weird. I want to find out more um, and a subtitle would help with that as well I think um, so yeah I'd say you really need to look at your title typeface first and foremost here it needs to read when you're really small um, and it needs to feel a bit more a bit more horror I'd say so then letters from a soldier so this is historical fiction and when I first picked this up, I thought it was non-fiction. This feels qu like quite a non-fiction cover to me. Um, so something you could do to help that would be bringing some, a character in or a sense of a character. Um, and I know you've got this drawing of a person here. I don't know if that's like an old drawing that's, that's specific to the cover, but um, to the book, sorry. But I think you just want to convey more of a story here. So... I'd say this landscape's really nice. Um, why don't you make that the whole cover? It's splitting it doesn't feel great. So why don't you have your landscape as your whole cover? Um, and then you could have your title up in the sky here. And similarly, similarly with a then with the memoir, um, it's about letters, so it's about correspondence, it's about a dialogue. A handwritten typeface is going to be great for that. That's going to convey that straight off. Um, just as a real visual thing. So I, I would suggest that for this. Um, and then it's set in the war. I don't know um, if this is relevant, but maybe you could have some kind of war planes in the sky or some boats or something that would help give it that kind of context of a story. I think that would really help. Um, and your author name is super tiny down here. You can be much bigger than that. Um, it's you can't even see there's an author name. Sorry, I keep holding them the wrong way. You can't even see there's an author name when you're that far back. So I would say bring your author name up a bit. Um, 
and I don't think splitting the cover is doing you any favours. I'd, I'd use this as your main image and work around this. Um, and that should really help and it should help make it feel a bit more fiction as well. So then we've got A Way Out, which is a memoir about depression. I think this is really good for the genre. Um, it looks looks like it's going to fit in really well on that Amazon page of the kind of mental health memoirs. They're often quite clean like this, so this, this is a really, really good start. Um, I'd say your type hierarchy is a little bit confused. All of your copy here is competing fairly similarly for your attention and you want to have your title first and foremost and then your subtitle and then your author name. So with them all at a similar size here, you're just not sure where to look first. So that's going to put some people off just straight off. So I would say keep your title as it is and then bring this subtitle down. It can be a bit smaller. Maybe have it all in blue. It's a little bit hard to read in yellow. I think you can probably see on my screen here. You can't really read that. Keep it all in blue. That's all part of the same text. So it's helpful to have it all in the same colour anyway. Um, and then in one note for white covers, which there are a few. Um, I didn't do it on this one. I have done it on the other ones is it needs a black border. So when you're uploading to Amazon, if you've got a white or a very pale colour, unless you put a border around it on your Amazon page, it's just going to be floating and it's going to look a bit odd. Um, so so it's, it's going to be helpful to have your black border on here um, just to place it on that Amazon page. Um, but I think your colours are great. Really nice and positive with the yellow, but with the blue kind of balancing it so you know it's it's about depression. I think they work really well. And I can just see that you said the Shutterstock image is bought, which was one thing I was going to mention because you still got the watermark on there. But if that's bought, that's great. Um, and no, on all covers, just make sure you're licensing images properly. Can't just take them off the internet. I'm sure you know that, but worth mentioning anyway. Um, so yeah, I think you're really nearly there with that one. I would just say, bring your subtitle down a bit, maybe put it all in blue. Um, and author name, kind of not bad that size, maybe a little bit smaller, but it's looking really good. Preacher Man. So this is a crime novel and I can see that it's number eight in the series. So I'd be quite interested to see what the rest of the series look like, whether you've got a series style set up for these or whether you're kind of doing something different each time. If you're doing a series, you want to have some things that are just the same on all your covers. So you've read one and you're on Amazon, you see another one that looks similar, same author, automatically know it's in the series. So great way to do that is your author branding. Um, if, if you've got your kind of same type lock up in the same place on all of your covers in your series, that's a really great way to do that as one of the elements. Um, I would say you're probably a little bit big on this one. You're fighting with the title here um, and I think your title's going to need to be first off. Unless you're like a super famous author, your title's always going to want to be bigger than your name. Um, and I think you're author type here it's not that compelling something that, that other than the image the hardest thing to get right on a cover is getting a type that expresses what you want it to say and I think here it's not really saying anything to me I think if you're crime you want a blockier font you want maybe caps you want maybe a bit of distressing on it something that kind of says a bit more and I've just seen, is this Dave? No, sorry. Um, so yeah, I'd look at your author, no, sorry, your title type here. Maybe you could have it centered and you could have this church spire going over the top. So it integrates into the image. That could be really nice. 
Um, and I'd also say it's a very black image. So as a thumbnail, it's quite hard to read what it is at all. I don't know if it's a black and white image to begin with, but can you bring some colour into it? Um, maybe in the sky, creepy sky, or a bit of kind of blue light or kind of green light down in the forest. That might that might help. Um, and again, that could be a series style thing. They could all be fairly black and white with a colour on them, a different colour on each. That could work really nicely. Um, and maybe a suggestion of a person. It's maybe a bit too dark an image to get a suggestion of a person, but it might be nice to have that human element to it. How to date when you're dead. So this is a comedy romance. And I think first off, this image isn't working that well for you. I, it feels a bit stock image, to, stock imagery to me. And I think lots of books in the genre do use kind of graphic or slightly cartoony figures. Um, but I think these are a bit too stylized for that. So the cover I wanted to reference on here is a cover called Just Haven't Met You by Kate, Kate Woods. Um, and that's quite kind of formulaic in the romance genre. So in lots of romance books, they use women, but they're quite a small element in the cover, quite a graphic element, and they're often silhouettes. So if you're conveying a character on a cover, you don't want to be too specific. You want people to be able to use their imaginations. So a silhouette does that really nicely um, while still having your character on it. So I think you could do with this one is have your title as the main element of the cover, just nice and big typographic, a nice kind of bold font, something a little bit fun, like this is a, a comedy romance. So you want to bring that kind of fun element into it and then have your two characters within that type somewhere. A bit like how she's done on Just Have a Menu. So you could have the devil, devil girl up here and then the angel girl down here um, and, and use them around the type as your central image. And I think that might help. I also don't think white's a great colour for this genre. It's generally quite a colourful genre um, and often fairly muted colours with like a pop colour. So kind of pastel colours with one bright colour, which you could do nicely. You could have pastels with this pink or with the yellow. Um, and that could work really nicely just to bring it in line, because at the moment I feel like it would stick out a bit on that Amazon page. Um, so I think that would help. I think your author name is fine at that size, um, but if you're if you're making your central type bolder, you might want to bring it into that same similar style in maybe a sans serif or something. Um, but have a look at the books in in the genre because it, it's fairly they're fairly formulaic um, and they're all quite bright. So the next one is the amulet. So this, oh, how am I getting this in? There we go. You're not going to see me on this one. This is a historical fiction uh, novel. It's set in 1885. My first thought for this was that it felt quite non-fiction. Um, I don't think there's much in this cover that tells me it's historical fiction. So that would be the first thing I'd try to address here. Um, I think from the synopsis I read, I didn't see the relevance of the wolf. If the wolf's relevant, that's great. Um, but you maybe want to bring that into your strap line or in your, into your blurb, just so that's part of the story. Um, but I'd say to, to make it feel a bit more historical, I'd look at your imagery. So you could keep the wolf image, but you could overlay a bit of a map if it's set in a particular place in Canada, or like a kind of compass, or a gun, or make it look like it's on distressed paper, um, just so you're giving real visual clues that this is this is a historical fiction book. Um, I think that would really help. And then in terms of the typeface, I don't think that's saying history much either. I think you could go for something handwritten, but maybe scripty like the kind of type you'd see on an old scroll or on an old document um 
it, it's just so important for your type to to link up with your image and to link up with your message so getting a typeface that feels like it's 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 written from 1885 is really going to help here um and then for my preference i think i'd probably go for a this one over here um just because i think the type lock up at the bottom is probably slightly neater but i think you need to look at the type as a whole so you could have your your scripty type down the bottom here it's gonna it's gonna work better down here than it is gonna on in these two spaces here um and as another, another note as a thumbnail i just can't get which way around this should be when i'm doing it backwards um you, your type needs to be a lot bigger and your image probably needs to be a, a bit clearer it's quite white um so you might want a few more colors the secrets of eye lane i think i'm saying that right i hope i'm saying that right from the synopsis i, I wasn't 100 percent sure on the genre i am i think this is ya fantasy if it is it's a great cover for that i think there's very little you need to do to this you've got great quality illustration love the title type um love all the kind of little elements you've got in here that suggest different parts of the story i think it's working really nicely for you um it's it could probably do with a strap line it's really useful to have a strap line just as like a third or fourth element just to give everyone that that idea of what's going on um and the only thing i would say for this one is for ya um there are some super bright exciting covers for why it's such a great genre to, to design for and i think on your amazon page or on your book website page wherever it's being sold why i use a lot of bright colors and kind of quite bold type um i think you might get a little bit lost there just because you're using just the blue and white i think can you maybe bring another color in maybe like an orange or a coral red or a neon just to give it that edge and make it pop just that little bit more i think that's probably all you need to do i think that's a lovely cover so this is bad memory and it's crime i think this is good it feels really crimey um i think your typeface works quite well for that and i i quite like the distressing you've got on it that works really nicely i don't think the colors work very well i think gold doesn't feel very crimey and especially when paired with blue i don't think it quite works for me i think if you got rid of that that or already feels a bit better and if you made this image a bit more black and white than kind of greeny and black that's going to help as well it's also going to help that image read because from back here you just can't tell what it is so if if it's black and white or like a, a tone of green and black that's just a bit more contrasty that's really going to help it read out um so i'd say it's all working quite well i think it'd be really nice if this image said a bit more about the story can you get an element of a person in here can something have been dropped that is a bit intriguing or can it be like a shadow can us the viewer be casting a shadow which just gives that image an element of the story at the moment it's not really telling me anything about what happens or it's not feeling that intriguing and i think if you put just one element of a person in there or an object that's been left behind or or evidence of a scuffle or something that's gonna just make that image feel a lot more intriguing um sophie hannah covers did that really well the old sophie hannah covers there was always like a broken object a broken doll or something on the floor and it was it always just made you want to pick up the book because you wanted to know what was going on there it's quite creepy um so i'd say that i'd say make this a black and white image or just a bit clearer put a, a person in it and then i think lose the gold and then just use your black and your white and your blue as as your main color palette and that will work quite nicely so next one is wandering the world so this is a travel memoir um i think this is a great image 
if, if, if this has kind of come from your travels, well done, that, that's a really good image for a book cover because it, it divides it really nicely. So you've got this great blue to put your type on with your image underneath and it all ties in really nicely. So I don't think you need to do anything to your image. I think you can work with that. Um, I would say on your strap line, so the strap line is 10 years, seven continents. Can that be a bit more expressive? Can it be what I learned in 10 years, seven continents or something just to bring you in a little bit more? And then I would also say as a thumbnail, I can't even see your author name. So your author name needs to be a lot bigger, maybe at the bottom would be nice. Um, and again, I'm gonna say something similar about the memoir. It'd be really nice if the title type had a bit more emotion to it. So again, you could handwrite it or maybe handwrite part of it. It could be wandering and then the world could be handwritten, um, just because then it's going to pin it to a personal story, just straight off as a visual. I think that would really help, because um, I feel like this typeface at the moment isn't particularly expressive, and I think you could be saying a lot more with, with your title type. Um, and also, there's just a bit of an awkward space in your title here. I think if you're going to look at the title type, I wouldn't worry about it, but you've got a bit of an awkward space there that I would try to fix, bring that the, into the world, um, just so that reads a bit better. But that's nice, I think you're almost there. I think you just need to look at your type on that one. The love experiment. So this is a romance novel, and it's about a scientist who um, kind of has a sexual awakening and then has these kind of two slightly jarring lives. Um, and until I read the synopsis, I didn't even notice the scientists in the background. I thought that was just kind of a blurry background. So I think you need to make that a lot clearer. Um, I would say for kind of sexy romance books, objects work really well. I think they probably work better than characters just because they're a lot about imagination, those kind of not these kind of novels. So you you don't want to show your characters that much because you want to give people the, the pleasure of imagining them themselves. Um, like I know Fifty Shades of Grey is a really obvious example, but that did that quite well with using objects, fairly suggestive objects. Um, and then it, it creates that intrigue without being too specific. So maybe here you could use a lab coat and some pearls. And then it's at that strange juxtaposition, which gives you that intrigue or lab goggles and a feather mask or something that, that have that juxtaposition that suggests those two kind of lives, but without showing you the people. Um, and then your cover can be a lot darker in this genre. Um, they're generally quite dark covers. So maybe have your two objects on a dark cover um, with your type at the top. Um, the script is fine when you're close up, but again, doesn't read very well as a thumbnail. So I'd say look at that. Script still works if it's bolder and maybe white on a dark colour, um, but you've got to make sure it's reading out properly. A serif works really well for romance novels as well, so maybe look at that. So next up is stop waiting and start living. So this is a self-help um, and I think it's doing it really well. This is probably of all of them, the best thumbnail that like works brilliantly as a thumbnail. So you've got that nailed. Um, and I would say for this one, I find the colors a little bit jarring. Um, I think the yellow works really well, but I think the purple with it isn't working for you particularly. So maybe can you swap that purple out for white, white boxes on top and bottom with black type? I think that would automatically make it feel a little bit classier. And I think your timer um, image works really well, but it might work better as a graphic symbol rather than a photograph. I think maybe the photograph is dating it a little bit. And if it was a graphic, um, just a graphic symbol of a timer, 
that might work in the genre a little bit better. Um, a really good example to look at for these covers um, are Rod Judkins. He does really good um, kind of self-helpy. They're more about kind of thought, um, but he does some really good graphic covers, which you might want to take some leads from. It's usually two colours, maybe three, um, and just a graphic element that suggests something, which your timer would do here. Um, but he's a really good example. The new one especially, what's it called? Ideas are your only currency um, is a really nice example of that. So I would check that out. Next up is this one. I think it was one of the only children's I have seen. So it's really nice to see a children's um, cover. And this is Back to Christmas. So it's a really nice illustration. I think whoever you've got to do that's done a really good job. Um, it's If you can see, it's a little truck with a green Father Christmas in it being pulled by penguins. Um, and I think that works really nicely. It's really nice and graphic. It reads really well. Um, the thing that strikes me about this one is that there's no red. It's a Christmas book and I feel like it needs some red. It needs to feel super Christmassy. I think if you're publishing at Christmas with a Christmas book or in like Easter or something that's a limited time, you need to just go all out um, because you've got quite a short window to sell your book in. So you need to kind of commit. So I would say up the Christmas on this one for children's especially you can you can go all out can there be tinsel on it or really twinkly stars can there be fairy lights in here maybe around the title just super jazz up the christmas um and then i would say it's a fairly minor thing for this line you've got under your author name you don't really need it you don't need to divide um, the author from the title like that it's if if there's an if there's a name on there it's the author name it, it it's fairly well known so you can take that line off it's not really doing anything for you if you're worried you can put the author name in a different typeface that will help differentiate it um but i just don't think you need that line um otherwise i think that's really nice i, I like your title type i think that works quite well but i would say kind of wind some fairy lights around it or or make it feel silvery and Christmassy or something. Just amp up that Christmas vibe. So next one is Heart of Thorn. So this is another romance novel, quite a different style to the other, other one we've seen. Um, when I first looked at this, to be honest, I thought this was a mountain range. It took me a little while to work out what was going on. I thought this was a mountain range that you'd kind of wound this photo into and then I realised it's a rose and then it's this photo. So I don't think the, the division is doing you any favours. I think the photo's probably the, the stronger element of the two. So maybe get rid of the rose and focus on this photo being your, your main element. Um, it's a nice photo. It's quite expressive. So you can definitely work with that. Um, and then I'd say it would be nice to have colour in it. The red and the black and the white works really well. So maybe your title can go into the red if you've taken away the rose. If the rose is important, it could be part of the title. There could be like a rose within your title type or something. Um, but just having red is going to have that kind of same feel anyway. So I would say put red in your title if you're just going to use this black and white image. Um, you could have the top half black and keep the image kind of roughly where it is and have the top half black and then work your title in up here. That might work. Um, and then I'd say your typeface isn't very expressive either. It's not particularly working for you or conveying um, much of a sense of a story here. So I'd look at that. Maybe a serif would, would work nicely or an italic would work quite nicely. Um, Dido, I think that's how you say it, D-I-D-O-T, typeface works quite nicely with that, it's got a lovely italic, so look at that, um, and maybe don't have it all the same size, maybe have heart of smaller, 
and then thorn bigger um, just just to break it up a bit that might work quite nicely um, so I think that would help with this one um, if you wanted to keep the rose I'd say get rid of the people and then do the kind of 50 shades of grey object cover I don't think you need to do people and object so uh, germline so this is a sci-fi crime first thing I'd say about this one is that it's quite hard to tell what the title is um, is it germline revolution is it revolution evolution is history it's a bit your types a bit confusing so I'd have a look at that and first of all all of your four points here are in different typefaces so they're really competing for attention which is what makes it really confusing so as a general rule on a cover I try to use two typefaces one for the author and one for the title sometimes you, you just use the one it depends depends how it works four is way too many um, and unless like kind of a typewriter is relevant typewriter typefaces don't really read very well on covers so I'd avoid them um, so I would have your title in one typeface and then keep your subtitle and your author in another and that's gonna just make it much easier to process what your title is and what the message is um, and then the next thing I'd say for this one for a sci-fi white isn't your best color sci-fi's are generally quite dark or kind of bluey orangey colors and I, I don't think white is going to read that well in that genre so I'd, I'd say look for, a, for a, a color background maybe this blue of the DNA would work um, but I think white it feels too clean and and it doesn't feel quite right to me I think you need to make it darker um, and then in terms of imagery can you do something that's a bit more symbolic so maybe the DNA and you don't need the face uh, I think at the moment again they're they're just competing a bit too much I think you're trying to say too much so can you use the DNA as a symbol can it be an emblem maybe it's a badge on someone's uniform or something like that and use that as your central graphic and I think that's going to make it feel a bit classier or just use the eyes I think the mouth isn't working for you eyes do get used quite a lot on on covers but it's because they're quite a good expressive image so maybe just the eyes on a darker cover that's quite good one eye maybe um so i think you just need to look at rejigging it and kind of taking away some of the elements you've got going on here i'm running late i'm gonna i'm gonna speed up so this is a fantasy it's called the scions and with this one um, one of the things I wanted to mention was that it's a series style again and if you're if you've got a series style if you're going to have a few books it's really important to think about um, how it's going to work across the whole series so this um, if you can see it's got a really nice night sky at the top here and I thought maybe that could be the element you use across all your covers so they all have an image but you have this night sky in it and maybe this one's a purpley night sky and maybe book two's an orangey night sky and maybe book three's got a bluey night sky and then you use that as your linking element that could be quite nice and that would work quite well for the fantasy genre um i'd say your author name is way too small you can have it much bigger um and i think this typeface is okay would it work across all of them in your series i'm not sure you might want to find something a bit simpler just so it's going to cover all bases um, and also I couldn't see in the synopsis anything about a cat so if the cat's relevant great keep the cat's eyes if it's not can they be your main character's eyes or something um, and then I'd also just bring up the lightness in your sky it's quite hard to see that's a tree line and a sky on when it's a thumbnail so if you just make your sky a bit lighter you're going to get this tree line a bit clearer and that's the image is going to read a bit better celebrity gulag i think you've got a great image here um you've obviously had someone professional do it so i think there's there's not too much to say on this one um, i think your type is working really well it fits really nicely with your image so it's all coming together really well 
Um, the only thing I think is when you when you make it small, you lose what it is. It could almost be a person's face when it's small. So I would look at your colours. You could make this red a little bit lighter, so your contrast is is a bit uh, heavier, and then you're going to read that image a bit better. Um, and again, I couldn't see anything in the synopsis about dog. Um, try and bring that in. Can it be in the strap line? Just so the relevance of your cover image is clear um, just on that, that first look. But I think that's looking pretty good. So this is the Night Writer. So it's another self-help cover here. It's, it's doing something similar to the Stop Waiting, Start Living, but in a different way. Um, and I think it's working quite well. It's, it's quite a nice cover, but I would say it's a bit dark. It's kind of brown tones and black tones, which doesn't feel very compelling. Um, it's about fitting in time to write, do your writing, write your novel, um, or whatever you need to write creatively in your evenings when you've had a whole day at work. So if it's for people who are that strapped for time, your cover's got to be really compelling because they've really got to want to pick it up to fit, fit in reading it. So I think I love your imagery of the desk with the light. I think that says your image, says your um, concept perfectly. I would say you probably don't need the desk. I think the, the lamp lighting up says the same thing, but it's a much quicker image and it could work graphically as well. So you could have a single color background and then your title as your main element and then the maybe the light can be lighting up the title and then it kind of fits with your title saying night writer being lit up um says the same thing as the desk but just in a more immediate way and if it's graphic as well like a graphic symbol rather than an illustration that's going to fit in that genre just one more before i have to go um so this is golden fire it's a historical thriller um, and there are a few points I just want to mention on this one. So you've got, I think, f four, I'm not sure if that's the same typeface, quite a few different typefaces here, but they're all arguing. They're all too big and shouty. So type is the first thing you need to look at on here. You don't need to say a thriller. Your cover should be telling you it's a thriller through the imagery. Um, and if it's not, it's not working. So take off a thriller and we'll make it look like a thriller. So I think your yellow isn't really working either. It's it's not feeling particularly historical. Gold might work or a bronze might work if it felt a bit metallic. I think that would work. And I think, again, maybe making golden smaller and fire bigger just to get a bit more kind of dynamism in your type. I think your imagery here is a little bit confusing. Um, I'm not sure the relevance of the vortex with this plinth. Again, is there a symbol that would work, an emblem or an object that is going to suggest it like a book or the fire or something? Just have that kind of one image as a symbol. And I think that's going to read a bit better than what you've got here. Um, and then your author type here, it's a bit squished up. So you can reduce the size of your name with a lot more space between the letters and it's actually going to read better. It will be smaller type, but with more space between the letters, it's just much more comfortable for you to read. So I would have a look at that. Um, and that's all I've got time for. That's gone really quickly. Um, so I'm on Readsy. If you want to send me your project, I will I will have a look at it and see if there's anything I can do. Yeah, it's been great. And I hope I've I've helped you. If I haven't covered your book, I'm sorry. Hopefully I've covered your genre and you can take something away anyway. Um, but I think that's it for now. So thank you. Have a lovely evening.